As a triumphant six-time national badminton champion and an Arjuna awardee, Damianti Tambe conquered the sports arena with her skill and determination. However, her life took an unexpected turn when her husband was captured during the 1971 Indo-Pak War and he never returned. In the face of this profound personal loss, Damianti's strength and courage shone even brighter as she embarked on a new journey. Damianti Tambe's life story is a testament to the power of human spirit to overcome challenges and make a lasting difference in the lives of those around her. Thanks a ton, ma'am, for coming to the studio. And uh, before I begin this particular episode, I want to tell the audience that you're just 75 years young. <laughs> And the reason why I'm telling that, and I know I'll be trolled for it, but the reason why I'm telling this is because the last 50 years of your life, what you have packed in that 50 years, most humans won't live that in multiple lifetimes. So I want to cover the first 22, 23 years of your life very quickly. You were, uh, you were born and educated in Allahabad, and then you uh, uh, were a badminton champion who uh, won the championship uh, six times. I want to talk about the last three times because the last two times you played, you played with your maiden name, That's which true. is Damianti Subedar. That's true. And after that, you got married. Yes. And you got married to Flight Lieutenant Vijay Tambe. Tambe. Yes. So, why don't you begin with that story, ma'am? I mean, it was an arranged marriage. And uh, since you're talking in co uh, relation to the sports part, he was very keen that I, I said, okay, I've played and we'll mm. settle down. After was, marriage, you said, After okay. marriage huh. and he was posted in Allahabad, uh, sorry, Ambala. And they didn't have a court and all, but I was satisfied. I mean, I was not wanting, no, no, no. He said, you have to play again and you must win uh, as Tambe. As Tambe. So <laughs> he put that uh, sort pressure of pressure on, on me and thankfully I could do it. So I was happy about it. And you were married for a year and a half. Right. And then one fine day, the Indo-Pak war breaks out. Right. It wasn't a fine day, let me tell I you. I know. It was a difficult day. Mm. I mean, I, I believe everybody knows how the war was. And it's so far back in my memory that it's difficult to even want to think about it. But yes, trenches were dug in our houses. And I was, he told me that I would be going away. But... Uh, and we were posted in Ambala and the house was in line with the runway. runway. And Ambala, as we all know, was Ambala, the first hit. Uh, yes, first, uh, first hit. bombing raids yes. came to Ambala. So I spent the first two, three days sitting in the trench, which were freshly dug, all ants around you. He had and told this is the me the month of December. In Ambala month of December, very, very third, December. Third December, the war broke out. So that was an experience, but uh, even to look back, it was a horrible feeling, very honestly. I wasn't scared then. As I feel scared sometimes, thinking, thinking now why I didn't feel scared. By myself, every time there was sort of lull about the uh, sort of siren, I would go and sit in the veranda, I can sit. Otherwise, I was kind of on my haunches because you don't want to have your head above, above the level the of the thing. Yeah. Just in case there is a sharpness kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And this is what all he had told me in preparation, not uh, in a classroom, but he said, by and Take by that like you this, be careful, yeah. do like this, do like that. So I was trying to do that, keep a spoon or something in your mouth in case. So all that happened and it lasted for about three days. I mean, it lasted long, of course. But after three days, I got a message. Somebody came and said that, uh, sir has said that go back home. So I imagined that it was Vijay who said that go back home. It, I thought maybe it's going to last long. So I packed my bag and uh, those were the days that nobody asked you how to, would you reach the station mm, mm, and where yeah. is the ticket and how would you manage. So uh, the station was about two and a half, three kilometers from our, where we lived. So I walked with my bag in the middle of the night, barely got into the train because the stoppage was just two minutes. So before I could enter, everybody keeps the doors shut. Mm, it it mm. was sort of that time. And uh, <clears throat> the last TTU was going sort of going off the thing. He said, you want to go? I said, yes, yes. So he stopped and I got into the train. And, uh, but I spent the, the entire night, rest of the night, sitting outside the bathroom of the thing. Anyway, I reached Allahabad at about six o'clock in the evening. And we 
heard the news on the television, on the radio actually. There were no televisions mm -hmm. those days. And his name was read out. They were, they were just probably Indian uh, radio Prisoners. or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan radio had very sort of, we were able to catch somehow. And they were reading out some na names. And I heard his name and two or three names that we could catch. One was his name. So I was, my mother in fact said, why, why are they taking his mm. name? I said, mommy, maybe they have, he has been imprisoned or something. They have captured him. But uh, I'm happy. Alive. Yeah, he's, yeah alive. he's alive. And he doesn't have to take part in the war anymore. Of course, a very selfish kind of a thought. But I thought it was like that. And I convinced my mother also. So we thought it, everything is okay. And when the war gets over, that was only the third mm. or fourth day. Mm. Mm. And the war ended and what happened after that, Simla agreement, etc. And then repatriation started. And then we got to know that quite a few people are there and they would be coming back. So we were told on the third train, when the third train comes, the missing people or people whose names are there, mm -hmm. they were expected to come. But nothing of the sort happened. Anyway, my father-in-law came met me and he said, uh, what are you doing? You keep yourself occupied. By chance, luckily there was a vacancy in uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University for the sports uh, position, sports director. I applied and I got the job. And the same year, I was, it was announced that I'll get the Arjun Puras award. Wow. So the year you lose yeah. is the year you, you get lose your... one trophy and you get another. So I coincided it with taking the award and then joining the university the next day. And that was 1972, 17th uh, December that I joined JNU. So I started working there and of course side by side trying to get more uh, what has happened to him. Mm. What then? And I mean, in the early I stages know. you had a lot of signs that uh, you had. Uh, yeah. Pictures uh, appearing. My, my father-in-law got, got a newspaper. Soon after that, Pakistani newspaper, uh, published from Bangladesh. But that time, pa yeah, yeah, Pakistan yeah, and Bangladesh yeah. were same. And the front page says, uh, uh, five pa pilots captured alive. 60, 46 down, five pilots captured alive. And uh, my husband's name was there name on the front it. page, first page. So again, some kind of a hope, hope that, okay, he'll come back. And it's their own paper which is saying this. Anyway, I took up the job and <clears throat> I was on my own. I didn't know anybody else. Uh, so trying to figure out what could have happened, just being in touch. How old were you then? 23. 23. 23. Yeah, mm. the next year I took mm. up the job. So, I mean, in hindsight, I, I mean, that was the time you feel you have to manage somehow. If you get a room, you have to manage. You think, oh, I had such a big house, such a nice house. I had garden, I had this, that and the other. Now you are reduced to one room. I feel at that time, you have to manage. The thought that the comparison is not there. Mm. You have to live, you have to survive, that kind of a feeling. But at the same time, now in hindsight, I feel, oh, that was... But then we, we believe in, go to this Panditji, unke paas mm. jaiye, ye mm. haan, haan, haan. Mm. he will come back, so do this puja, that puja. So I was keeping about three to four fasts in a week. So, I mean, uh, all those things I was doing, but at the same time, side by side. And I was fortunate I had done the course in physical education. Mm. So, I was not at a loss as far as the work is con was concerned. I was able to manage. The university was also new. The first vice chancellor, I, I will never forget his, um, this thing, uh, the statement he made, uh, Ji Partha Sarji Ji. Uh, there was a meeting happening and I was also called to represent sports and I was sitting in the corner, very underconfident and I was hoping everybody after they have gone, I'll quietly slip out mm. of the room. Mm. But he and uh, Professor Kothari, who was the Kothari Commission gentleman, they were at the door and as I was going out, he stopped me and he was introducing all the people mm. who were there in the meeting. As I was going out, he stopped me and introduced me to Professor Kothari and he says, she is going to be an asset to the university. I said, all right, that's mm. a pressure on me. But I personally feel today that, yes, I did justice to my job, justice to the students who are there. Uh, I could manage all the sports. And even today, after 43 years of my service to the university, 
there are still students who come to me and meet me in my house. And they are such that if I want anything, mm. they would do it. So, uh, these are the small, satis they're, uh, small is not the right word. I mean, this, this is the kind of satisfaction you draw and therefore, I feel sports is a very important thing in life for in everybody. So, uh, that was my time in the university, 43 so, years. You, you know your husband is alive. You are getting signals which are coming that he is alive. His picture is seen and you mentioned also Time magazine carried a picture yes. on its cover which had him on that. Yeah. And you are all by yourself trying to figure out, uh, you said you went to… These things happened a little later. Initial years where I was by myself and then in 1978, in the, on the floor of the parliament, a news was read out saying that there are 40, there are 182 Indian people missing and in Pakistan custody of which 40 are defense people and their names were listed and Vijay's name was also one on of the, the 40 okay. on the list. So, you get okay, hmm. they are there, government knows about them and I am sure the we felt that they would do. Back, yeah. And then there was one Dr. Suri, he is no more, his son was also there. He had received three letters from him in the meantime. While he was in Pakistan. He While he was in Pakistan jail. Hmm. So, he got all of us assembled. He used to write letters and collect us. Us uh, as in the people who have lost their loved ones. Yeah, or, or who are missing. Who are in the, uh, missing. So, he would, uh, we would hold meetings and sit and decide what should we do next. We used to go to the government time and again. Every time there was an uh, exchange of uh, people or something, maybe civilians only, we would go to Vaga border with the placards holding that if you have seen anybody carrying photographs of our people. Hmm. So, those were the things, I mean, we were doing then there was a, a Time magazine uh, in which photograph of um, Captain Major, uh, Major Ghosh appeared. Hmm. And behind that, I mean, Major Ghosh is holding the bars of the cell. Oh, the, in the prison. In the prison. Hmm. And uh, there is one person standing, standing behind, behind him, him, who resembled my husband very much. And he says, Indian prisoner behind the bars. Time magazine of 1972 itself. So, that gave us later on, whenever we came to know about this. Everybody had their own evidences, but when we got together, then we exchanged information with mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. So, Major Suri's letters, Major Ghosh's, then this happened. Then uh, there was Victoria Schofield. She had written a book. She was a friend of Benazir Bhutto. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book and <clears throat> she says, she had written in that book that Indian prisoners in uh, Pakistan. And she, this book, she had very categorically mentioned that they would shriek at night and this was a particular kind of torture Bhutto was being subjected to. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Okay. They were they were lodged next to, next to uh, Zulf, the um, this thing's uh, Bhutto ji's uh, cell, and she written disc, uh, described this in great detail. And uh, then we worked out if the book has been released in 78, 79, and she has mentioned about this, this particular incident, incident. That means they must be alive till 78, 79. Mm, mm what happened to them after that. Mm. So, this is how we sort of went step by step and all tr the evidences were trickling uh, from various sources. My, one of my uncles went to Pakistan with a cricket team mm. and uh, he said that uh, whosoever was the, uh, it, this happened in Punjab region and he said that the whole family had said you are going as a coach or manager of the team, junior cricket team. So, tr please try and find out about him. So, he went and he asked, I don't know who was the governor at that time, Ayub Khan or somebody. He said, everything went off well. He said, yes. He said, anything you want to know, anything more that we can do for you? He said that we, I want to know about my nephew. That's your husband. Hmm. Hmm. So, he said, uh, what's his name? He said, this is his name. And he said, the entire family wants to know what has happened. So, he said, yeah, he's alive. He said that. Huh. But yeah. don't ask me to show you. Show you. He said, but that's not fair. Hmm. He said, no, but I can't show you. And there is one particular in, um, uh, intersection in Punjab somewhere where the plane that he was flying is uh, I mean, d displayed there with one wing okay. mirror. We are missing. Wing broken. Miss hmm. broken. As a trophy. 
as a trophy. Hmm. So he said, no, but he said, no, no, I can't show you. Then later on in the evening, somebody comes and says, tomorrow be ready. I'll take you, we'll take you there. Okay. So then in the morning, and but he says he was blindfolded, sat in the car, this vehicle. He was taken, he was taken to the cell. And then he, I mean, he has repeated this without a change to n number of people. He is no more now. In Chandrasutta's book also, it, she mentions this. And uh, he says, I went there, I saw him. He saw him? He said, I saw him. And, but he was, he looked at me, but uh, there was no recognition. No, he must have been in a... Yeah. And he says, I was on purpose wearing the India blazer. Blazer. So, I was trying to point, point out to him. Point to the But India. these two people said that, no, no, please don't do that. And hmm. I was there very briefly and they brought me back. Up now somebody can argue, did he actually go? Does, I mean, I'm willing to believe. Yeah, but his uncle, why would he, why why would would he make he, up the story? Why, yeah. I mean, why would he make up a, a story? For whom? Yeah. What? I mean, he's not responsible for it. And, and this story doesn't give any closure. Even no. if you assume the person wanted to lie to give closure, this doesn't give closure. No, it doesn't give closure. So this happened. I mean, this way there are so many evidences. And we were sent to Pakistan twice. When you say we... It's uh, a group of six people okay. out of this missing. Okay. I was the only woman, five men, and we went. They were we, what, fathers of? Uh, uh, three were fathers, two were brothers, and, and myself as mm, a wife. Mm. When we went, three of us had our passports. Mm. Three of them were given government passports. We were taken there for a week with the understanding that you would be shown the uh, prisoners, prisoners. Hmm. and after that the repatriation would be done. Maybe we'll say that though they are under assumed names, hmm. this was the understanding. Hmm. They, were, they are under assumed names, you go and recognize hmm. them and then the repatriation will take place. Hmm. If we go there, midway we get to know that what India was supposed to do to their prisoners, hmm. they have not stood by their oh, So th this was a quid pro quo? Yes, that, exactly. Okay. Hmm. So we went there. I mean, they were not there. We came back. So it was a futile uh, visit, seven days. They were not there or you were not even shown them? They, yeah. I mean, where they had all assembled in Multan, they were not there. And one yeah, of... No, no defense people were there? No. Not a single one? No, we, we won't know. They were all in civilian clothes. Okay. And they were not uh, able to speak or... One of them, two majors, uh, um, uh, Dr. Suri, he indicated that your people are behind the wall. Huh. I mean, we heard. We were all walking together, looking at each face very clearly, huh. very carefully. Huh. That we shouldn't... You see, because we know, we have seen movies, yeah, yeah. how the beard grows and oh, your in any eyes... Case, eight years of torture inside a jail. Yes. It'll so, we were going to be very careful. This was the first time we were being sent. And uh, one of the persons, he said that your, uh, your people, people are behind the wall. They are here behind the wall. I mean, he didn't indicate ah, because yeah. he, he knew he that he can't. Yeah, he just said they are behind the wall. Huh. So we thought maybe, but we came out and uh, what, what do you do next? What do you do next? Even if he tells you. So nothing happened after that. We came back. I said, why did you all send us? No, no, no. We thought this would be have this I mean, all kinds of stories. And then the minister who had, who had briefed us, later on I said, he says, no, but I never said all these things. I said, these were your words. They would be under assumed names. And when you go and uh, identify them, then we would be able to bring them back. Now, what do you do? How do you fight uh, the government in, at, at such times? Much later, again, we put the pressure on. I said, no, no, we are not satisfied. We are not happy with what you have done. In our own ways, writing letters, this is what has happened. This is what evidences we have. Thing. I mean, if you have 40, let's assume I was not satisfied. There was a few families, they didn't contest. Their son's name is, one road is named after the son's name. Why did you take his name in the list? Why did you put his name in the list of 40 people? Mm. Because they were not contesting. That we would like to believe that you saw, that you had a, some proof, some reason to put that, that name. That name on the list. So yeah. that elderly family also joined us. He said, oh, we thought our son is no more. But the government itself is saying they are there. So, I mean, how much, I mean, it's unbelievable how you can, totally 
finish the case. You pretend you are doing it, you pretend to send us, but going is going even with the hope when you come back, you are so dejected, you are so frustrated. Where do you go after that? I mean, after some years, okay, do this, try this, try this, nothing. Eventually, um, a father and son uh, pair, they fought our case. They said, if you have evidences and the government itself is on the floor of parliament, acknowledging. repeating, mm. acknowledging n number of times, at least 25, 30 times, every session there would be this question and every session they would say this. They would say what? That we believe they are there. We believe they are prisoners of war. And even today, when I sent an RTI, I have got the reply that we believe they are there. Then why have you put their name in killed in action in the war memorial? Put, their, put it as missing, missing in action. action. It's all right. In fact, what happens, actual life, what happens, that, leave it that to us. But uh, if, you, if your records say they, you believe they are missing in action, you can put every other country does like that. You go to, I mean, America, they have a s exclusive uh, section where they have missing in action, Vietnam War and all, because mm. those things mm. happened that time. Mm. Mm. Why, couldn't we do, why couldn't we have done that? Just because seven years have gone, um, that's the rule. If the rule, you have not tried enough. We have done what we should not have had to do. We were not expected to bring evidence. I mean, sometimes the government machinery would say, any more evidence? I said, are we supposed to provide evidence? Had they gone to protect me in person or the family in person, they had gone for the nation. They are fighting for the country. They are not fighting for A, B, C. So, is it the responsibility of the government or the individual families to look for them? Dr. Suri's letters, when the son writes the letter and he takes it to the government, they say, no, 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 you have concocted this letter. This is, we don't believe. The letter that Dr. The son Suri's had written son has written from to Pakistan the father, yeah, saying we are 20 officers here. Papa, please get us released from here. Written from Karachi. Dates are given. 4, 5 and 6th March, maybe he was not able to write, write those in letters go. in one go. Those letters are there on record. And you say, uh, no, you have concocted this letter, you are trying to say. To a father, what would he gain? You can't uh, fool yourself. I mean, it's not a court case that I am going to fight her. Mm. So, uh, where do you begin and where do you end? The end is that, okay, we'll say, I know mean, you're not sending us to a, for a pleasure trip. Twelve, fifteen of us going to Pakistan in the month of June. The temperature going to 52 and 55. This happened after the Agra summit, you said, right? Uh, no. This, uh, the third trip when you went. The, the second trip. The third, second trip was my badminton, badminton trip. Badminton trip. The mm. third trip was uh, after uh, the Agra, Agra uh, summit. Ha, ha, come and uh, see the jails. And then... Uh, President Musharraf, third day after is going back, writes, uh, conveys that, no, no, we have checked all the jails, the, nobody, no Indian prisoners there. So, why, why have these kind of accords? Fifteen of us go there, J ten jails. They said, our intention was only to go and see individually, because nobody else would be able to recognize and after so many i mean the war happened in 71, 71. and we are going in 2007 so even if i had been able to recognize vijay i would have oh my god at least i could recognize him i said nobody no jailer would be able to recognize hmm. because they must be shifting so transferred the, the all those things they won't happen. even know yeah and so many I've, of them won't Probably even be coherent no. after yeah. 30 years the of... The first jail that we went to was Lahore. Huh. Half of them didn't know. I mean, if we had taken some mithai for them, they didn't even know how to put that mithai in their mouth. Indian prisoners, but of different categories. Indian prisoners But they are not even in their senses. You have kept to defense And... 2012, Oman, mein there, a case was cited. 
where ek aapke punjab se somebody as a carpenter these people keep hmm. going for hmm. Hmm. all middle these East middle east countries hmm. he went there and he uh, sort of bumped into a somebody else who was a sardar and he was a carpenter and this person got and he, they got talking and then he said ki aap kahan se aaye ho hum kahan se all that happened and this person said hum to 71 war ke hain ladai ke baad hum logon ko sabko naav mein bitha ke yahan bhej diya oman mein bhej diya pakistan se and he said ki meri family is shehar mein hai meri wife mere sasur hain wo log but he said ki jab jayenge jaoge aap wapas to unse milna magar ye kehna main wapas kabhi nahi aa paunga बट मैं जिंदा हूं क्या किया हमारी सरकार ने उसको पूछा नहीं जी कोई नहीं है क्या क्या हाउ डू यू डू आई मेट समबडी ए बांग्लादेशी एंड बाय दैट बांग्लादेशी वाज इन पाकिस्तान व्हेन द वॉर ब्रोक आउट सो दे वर आस हु वुड यू वांट वांट टू फाइट फॉर यू वुड रिप्रेजेंट पाकिस्तान और बांग्लादेश लड़ाई तो उनकी हो रही थी ऑल दो said they want bangladesh. bangladesh they were all incarcerated hmm. afterwards they were released hmm. after 4 5 years then he went back to bangladesh and came to complete his training he was doing navy ki training so he came to jamnagar to okay. complete his training to complete his training here hmm. a lot of officers uh, viewers may not know a lot of bangladeshi hmm. officers get trained in Can train, yeah. in india so <coughs> then wo he came to jamnagar my brother in law which is cousin he was posted there as a doctor tambe sir name tambe so they were sitting in the mess and talking and who are you sort of mm, introduce mm. each other he said tambe he said tambe i feel i have heard this name and this is how the conversation started and then he said uh, is any of your family members uh, involved in the war then my brother in law said like this he said i think i have met somebody because i was also in the prison and uh, mm, some mm. Of, some of the indian prisoners were there and i sort of jumped into uh, whichever way and i and there was somebody writing something on the wall and the stone or whatever he was writing it fell down and we were talking and he said i am from india and this one said i am from bangladesh i am from yeah sort of east bengal that that time east pakistan so he said how come he said i was in the war what did you fly he said sargodha sect all these things so when my brother in law met him in jamnagar he said uh, he called me he said ki aisa aisa i met somebody so you want to send some more information that i can verify from mm. him so i said no i want to come myself and talk to him because i have been doing all the spade work mm. i mm. know much more than any of mm. you mm. he said nahi nahi unko laga i may make a fuss or a cry and i'm like nahi please if he doesn't want to meet me i'll come back but mm. please allow me to come mm. so i flew down to jamnagar mm. and i asked him i said aap mujhse baat karenge ha and we talked for about 8 hours spread over two days but the gist of the thing is bahut baatein batayi he said i said uh, what did he look like and all he said thin tall whatever i said what height he stood up he said about my height and i said what more he said he had a crinkly kind of hair and he had a scar on his chin to हमने कहा आप तो बोले कि दाढ़ी रहती तो हाउ डिड यू गेट टू सी दिन ही सेट द हेयर डजन ग्रो इफ यू हैव अ स्कार एंड ही सेट आई सेट हाउ डिड यू रिमेंबर सच अ थिंग ही सेट बिकॉज आई ऑल्सो हैव अ स्कार एंड ही शोड हिज स्कार टू मी ही सेट दैट इज वाई आई स्टिल रिमेंबर अबाउट हिज स्कार एंड ही सेट वेन वॉट एवर ही वॉज राइटिंग वेन आई बेंड डाउन टू गिव हिम दैट एज आई वॉज गेटिंग अप आई सॉ दैट स्कार and then after that he said i was scared that they catch me yeah, having talking to him or something he, like yeah that. he said that i saw the sardars for the first time in my life hmm. and uh, so this is a piece of information others may believe or not believe but i have no reason not, not to believe, to believe. Yeah. but he said one thing i am telling you i have told you everything spread and then i said how does it i taken with just photograph mm-hmm. so i drew some with the pencil hmm. uh, just brush did he look like him hmm. he said look i saw him only for a very brief time i only remember these incidents hmm. but if you ask me to remember like nice. his face hmm. i may not be able to tell you hmm. i said all right he said from my side only one uh, request 
I will not admit in front of anyone. Huh? Mm. So, if you go officially and people come to me mm. because I have lost so many years there, I was not able to complete my training, which I want to do now. I will refuse having told you anything. What happens when I come to India, I come back to back Delhi to. and send a letter? The first thing they do is send somebody there and say, okay, this, did this happen? Mm. He said, no, I don't know anything. So, <laughs> these are the in more highlighting more how our government worked and how they just sort of disposed of all the evidences that we had managed to collect and pass it on. What was the interest or lack of interest, I will say? No interest. Let them languish. If they are there, they will go their own way. We are not responsible. And all 54 defense people you are willing to lose to the, uh, in the war and not take any cognizance of them. How do you explain this? I mean, individual lives we can live. But as a nation, this is the value of your defense uh, soldiers, army, air force, whatever. There was, there were, half of them were army, half of them were air force. And it uh, doesn't mean anything. And we talk about I mean, you hear all this. Why waste? They are all ex-NDA student um, uh, people who had gone from NDA, wherever they had gone. He was, he had, uh, he was trained uh, in America for one year. He was trained in Russia for six months. Uh, everything goes waste, and you you don't bother for your people. Uh, we, re we repatriated more than ninety thousand uh, Pakistani yeah, soldiers. Ninety three, ninety three thousand. Soldiers, I mean, that was such a huge number. You could have got anything, anything. in return. Yeah. And I don't know how the system works. Do you not ask the Army and Air Force, aapke koi log to nahi gaye hai? please give us the list. Hmm. What is 54 against 93,000? So, since then till now, 43 years in JNU, you retired uh, about 10 years ago yeah. and now you work uh, with the uh, War, War Widows, Widows Association. Ji. Tell me about that. No? Um, Firstly, you mentioned that there are close to around 30,000 War Widows. Uh, uh, yeah, 27 to 30,000 30, is what yeah, the number is, 30, was. Yeah. So, uh, basically after I was close to, when I was finishing, by chance I met uh, uh, Dr. Mohini Giri, uh, daughter-in-law of uh, the President, President Bibi Bibi Giri. Giri. and uh, I still can't recall how and when I met her, but I had gone and that was surprisingly across the road. The university is this side, on the other side of the road is the building hmm. where the office is. is. I met her and she asked me, and she asked me, uh, do you get pension? I said, yes. She said, how much? I said, uh, 1400. She said, that's very little. So I said, I don't know, that's what I get. So she said, no, I think you should get 30, 35, 40. I said, I, I, what should I do? She said, just write a letter to, as to whom? She said, write to the Prime Minister. Now, after having got such <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no response kind for on every time, I had no faith really, honestly. So, she said, no, no, write to uh, the Prime Minister. So, I sent a letter. So, that sort of gradually got sorted out. But then, uh, then she, when I finished my work there, she said, come and uh, work with us here. So, I was uh, secretary there. Uh, they have three years tenure for three terms, so nine years as secretary and after that I am a president now for the last uh, three, four years. But the basic thing is that I had, I could live my life because uh, fortunately I was educated, my parents were educated and uh, I have had that determination that I have to find out something. Uh, as we discuss, not knowing is a is a more uh, is worse. painful thing. So I managed my life, but then after coming here, I thought there could be ladies who are not able to. I mean, I myself hadn't yeah, because I was getting fourteen hundred, and at one time I was getting only three hundred and fifty rupees. So I wrote a letter and uh, I went to the defense minister's house. And of course, those days you could not just walk, go and meet anybody. Well, neither can you now. No. Uh -huh. And I gave it to the guard on the uh -huh. gate and sent a letter inside to say that 350 rupees, I can't even buy my breakfast for the entire month. So I'm uh, donating this in uh -huh. the scenic uh, welfare, whatever mm. it is. I was getting 500 rupees in JNU and I thought 
I can manage, but this 300 I can do without. So that was the time. But uh, of course, uh, I met Mohini ji and she said that now that you have finished, you have time. It will be nice if you come here and help in the association. So since then I am uh, uh, working with the War Widows Association. And it's, it's a nice satisfying feeling because um, I could manage whichever way I did. Uh, but I feel uh, there are cases where they need help. And it's, it's, it's a very nice feeling for me that I have been able to help somebody. So that's, uh, that's the way I spend my uh, time, free time, let's say. In fact, most of my time now <laughs> going so, there. So, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. You lost, well, you lost your husband when you were 23. Yes. And this is more than 50 years. Yes. That you've been at it. <laughs> In a way, yes. Mentally, um, I mean, there are, uh, I'll not say that I'd, I'm not upset. There are times I'm very upset. But uh, the, th the thought is that even if it was one and a half years, I, it was enough for me to survive the rest of my life. Not in hindsight, I managed. So, he is there in my mind and my heart non-stop. But that doesn't stop me from doing my normal chores and going and helping anybody. And I just pray to God that keep me healthy enough so that I am able to do something good for others, for this country if I can. That's that's all the aim is for the timing till I'm able to walk around. <laughs> I go out also and meet ladies. Wherever I go, I find out where the Veer Naris are living and I go and meet them. Veer Naris, just to tell a few of the viewers who may not know, is basically yes. the war term for war widows. The term for war widows. <coughs> the other last, two years back, I had gone to Pune. My in-laws are there. My sister-in-law, it was her birthday. And I said, where is Southern Command? And I knew somebody, she, that lady took me. And, uh, and I spent four hours. I mean, they have those little uh, houses next mm -hmm. to each other. And uh, I spent about four hours with them. And uh, somebody said, you don't know them. You haven't met them. What would you do? I said, uh, never mind. I mean, the, I mean, one can always build a connect. Somehow I sat with them and uh, all of them, we all assembled. So I said, okay, uh, let's talk because I didn't know anybody. So I said, you want to talk? You see, what an ordinary person maybe not realize that they hold back so much mm. in their hearts. Mm. And somehow, if I meet a Veer Nari or she meets, then I was telling the other day somebody came visiting and what do you all do? I said, three of us could be in one room and without uttering a word, there is a connect, the connect. three of us. You've all lost. Yes. You've all lost. Yeah. So we, we know what the other person is feeling. We don't have to talk to each other. So I said, I went there and I talked. I said, how are you, etc. So I said, okay, let me start. And I said a few things and then I made the other ones speak. I said, tell me a little bit. I know you don't know me, but please tell me. And in the end, a stage came when I asked, has anybody not been able to speak? I want to hear from mm. everybody. How mm. you all manage? How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Do you also think that you think that your husband would be the husband of the husband? Do you think that it will be the husband of the husband? So, slowly, 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 I could get everybody to speak. But what was the last what I noticed and very disturbing, the lady whose house we were, I went to her and uske do bache, a boy and a daughter. Uh, they were in the other room, grown up in teens. And uh, us, all the kids were in the other room and all, all of us sitting. But they were sort of peering, chote bache, palang pe ke, nicely they slept off also. Hmm. Because these cases are still happening. Hmm. On the border, these cases are still happening. Hmm. So they could be today a 22, 23, 25 years old woman hmm. with a two years, three years old child. Hmm. So I mean, all all ages were there, and I've taken photos with them and things. So uh, inke dono bache they were there, and when I asked the hostess, I said, "Aapne to baati nahi kari, aap to you are just giving us hmm. tea, coffee, all those things." Hmm. She said, "Nahi, nahi." I said, "Nahi." 
you must also she said how i said akitte bacche bade the aapke they were very young so when she started to talk unke do bachon ne they had themselves not heard the about the father the mother talking about it because she said mere ko himmat hi nahi hu main apne bachon se kaise baat karu is cheez ko about the father and the, the both the kids started to cry because probably that was the first time they hearing the they mother. had hearing from the mother and the mother was crying so they came and clung on to the mother and all these so you see i don't know if this helps anybody else but i feel that at least they have not have taken taken it out once been able to cry also gets difficult i on saturday sundays mere ko bahut difficult ho jata hai because i am home and i am listening to those songs sad songs <laughs> which one shouldn't but you feel the connect in that song those songs so somehow i said no no let me get up and start doing something but you need that kind of taking it out also you may be alone you may be with people but i think it's easier to take it out by yourself and not with others so it's a i don't know uh, i difficult bolna bhi theek nahi lagta because but uh, disappointment as far as the government is concerned that's for sure everything is 99% of my life is behind me and i will uh, that one and a half years thanks to my husband they were so good i lived because of those one and a half years and what i did that was to occupy myself and if i have occupied myself by uh, working in the university i have been able to help the students these students i meet them they come i met a boy who came and met me and padhta tha saath mein ma'am mere ko khelna hai i said theek hai aap you come to me koi mere saath khelta nahi when i was in the university i said when you want to play badminton get an extra racket i am sitting here i'll come and play with you the hall was right there so ek din dopahar ko aa gaya ma'am chalo khelne i would tie my sari and go and play with one day i said the hall khali hona hai one day he comes to my room at 5 o'clock humne kaha kya hua ma'am khelne chalna aapne kaha tha jab free ho gaye to aa jana i said 5 o'clock in the morning you want to? please ma'am i said all right come i went and played with him i met him long later he is now settled in russia so i told him ek bar mila ke ma'am russia aayi hai hum aapko russia ghumayenge so i went with my niece and all that and i met him and the first thing he does ma mother he had lost his mother recently he came and put his mother shawl on my shoulders kehte ma ma i i hope you don't mind no i said i feel honored that you are treating me like this another boy comes knocks at the door when i was in the university ha humne kaha bolo bhai i thought he is taken to take clearance from me i said bolo khada tha ma'am aapne pehchana nahi i said every year students change how do nahi 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 ma'am aisa nahi ho sakta you have to humne kaha acha naam batao did you play any games he said yes ma'am main table tennis khelta tha i said you are so and so he said yes he started crying aapne pehchan liya ma'am i mean these are little things that will stay with me humko nahi pata rehta ki students ke liye kya humne kaha hum to tumhara koi number i was not the yeah, sports <laughs> the sports mein koi <laughs> i least, don't grade not, you not, i don't grade you hmm. i said but tumko where are you these said ma'am i'm to america mein hai humne kaha fir yahan kaise aaye aapko dhoond rahe the bahut tar humne kaha hum kahan khoye the kala ma'am humne driver se wo guard se pucha ma'am ke paas ek hari rang ki gaadi thi wo to nahi dikh rahi hai wo kaha kehta hai wo ab ma'am jo ab ma'am aati hai unki to blue car hai i said that's so stupid way of finding Fine. anyway i said why did you come tell me clearance lene nahi ma'am aapne mujhe ek cheez kahi thi jo aaj tak main nahi bhula maine kaha kya kehta hai aap roz office ke baad nikal ke sports ka field ka round lete the aur tennis court pe khade rehte the aur court theek bana hai ki nahi lining thi wo sab dekhte the we used to observe i didn't know that students observe these little things also humne kaha fir kya hua to kehne lagi main ek bar aaya to aapne kaha ki kyon khade ho khelo na तो हमने कहा मैं तो मेरे को आता नहीं है तो आपने कहा कि जब तक रैकेट ही नहीं उठाओगे तो सीखोगे कैसे सो यू हैव टू स्टार्ट समवेयर 
तो इसे आइसिड मेरे पास रैकेट नहीं मैंने कहा ये रखे रैकेट कुछ लो उनसे रिक्वेस्ट करो टेक द रैकेट खेलो सिमिलरली एथलेटिक हो रहा था तो आपने कहा दौड़ो टेन थाउजेंड की रेस हो रही थी तो आपने मैंने कहा मैं इतना नहीं दौड़ पाऊँगा तो आपने मुझे कहा था कान में कि अरे आधे लड़के तो वैसे ही रुक जाएंगे तो दौड़ लो कुछ ना कुछ मिल जाएगा कहता मेरे को ब्रॉन्ज मिल गया वो चीज़ें मुझे याद है कि जब तक कोई चीज़ शुरुआत ही नहीं करोगे तो सीखोगे कैसे अब वी डोंट पे अटेंशन टू दीज लिटिल थिंग्स वॉट यू से हाउ इट कैन इफेक्ट ए स्टूडेंट लाइफ बट देर वर टू केसेस आज के तारीख में भी विश्वास करिए देर आर सो मेनी स्टूडेंट्स आई एम श्योर आई एम नॉट सरप्राइज मैं मेरे आँख का ऑपरेशन हुआ क्वेटरैक का वन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स बहुत आई यूज टू रियली हेट हिम बिकॉज ही वॉज सो फिनिकी अबाउट एवरी थिंग मैम मेरे को यही वाला बैग चाहिए मेरे को यही वाला वो चाहिए करके एंड uh, आता था एंड बट नाउ ही इज सो केयरिंग कि आँख ऑपरेशन करके आए ही इज विलिंग टू फुट मै चप्पल पहना रहे हो मैंने कहा बेटा मत करो ऐसा नहीं मैम घर आके सब वो लगा दिए उसने आपको ये दवाई इतने बजे लेनी मैं वो बना के जा रहा हूँ आई गिव यू अ कॉल एंड आस्क एवरी इज इन दैट इनफ टू हैव सरवाइव टू हेल्प मी टू सरवाइव तो हम कुछ करते हैं उसके बदले में ईश्वर भी कुछ भेजता है लोगों को के जरिए कि आपको मैं सहारा भेज रहा हूँ यू मैरी नॉट सहारे के लिए नहीं बट देर इज सो मच इन्वॉल्व इन अ मैरिज यू डोंट गेट एवरी थिंग बैक शायद साथ रह के भी लोगों को नहीं मिलता hmm. होगा शायद बट hmm. किसी न किसी जरिए से गॉड कैन हेल्प यू एंड वेर एवर यू गेट द हेल्प यू मस्ट रिमेंबर टू थैंक गॉड अपने आप चीज़ें नहीं अब इन लोगों को भेजता है वो ईश्वर कि ये मदद करेगा आपको सो आई मीन आई लुक एट थिंग्स आई मे बी टू हेल्प माई सेल्फ बट दैट्स द वेट इज I in turn I want to help the Virnaris or anybody who wants my help. Anybody who wants my help. मैं सबसे कहती हूँ जो भी मेरे मेरे लायक मैं कुछ कर सकती हूँ do not hesitate to ask me for it. मैं करूँगी हाथ पैर चल रहे मैं करूँगी जब तक कर सकती हूँ I drive my own car. एक बार गार्ड ने रोका मैम बुरा मत मानिएगा एक बात पूछना है मैंने कहा पूछो बुरा मानने की होगी तो मैं मान जाऊँगी बुरा मैम आपकी एज कितनी है मैंने कहा ये तो बुरी मानने की बात है नो बट वॉट आई एम सींग इज दैट आई कैन ड्राइव माई सेल्फ आई थिंक आई कैन टॉक सेंस स्टिल एंड इट्स आई एम मैनेजिंग माई लाइफ सो इट्स ऑल राइट द कोर रीजन वाई दिस शो वॉज स्टार्टेड वॉज टू ब्रिंग पीपल हु हैव लेड अ वेरी डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ लीडरशिप इन देर लाइफ एंड वेरी क्लियरली आई मीन योर स्टोरी है तो नहीं मुझे मालूम मगर नहीं आप, आप अब ये जो आपके चप्पल पहना रहा है ना पैर पे उससे पूछिए आप ही मीन माई लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू इज दैट देर आर आई थिंक सेवरल पीपल विल बी वॉचिंग दिस शो एंड दे विल बी ऑल ऑफ अस हैव अवर ओन चैलेंजेस हर एक लाइफ में जरूर जरूर एंड हर एक को अपना चैलेंज बहुत बड़ा लगता है इट कुड बी अ लॉस ऑफ अ लव्ड वन Yes. uncertainty not yes. knowing yes. Uh, what's your message in terms of when people are you yourself said that you were at the verge of ending it all you know more than mm. uh, a few times mm. what's your message to people who are in that state of mind dekhiye mere ek uncle vijay ke side ke uncle the wo kehte the ki ishwar aapko bhejta hai khane peene sone ke liye nahi उसके उसको आपको भेजने धरती पे भेजने का कोई कारण रहता है और मुझे लगता है कारण चोरी चपाटी ये सब का तो कारण के लिए भेजता नहीं होगा वो तो जब बिगड़ जाते हैं लोग तो एंडिंग द लाइफ इज वन मिनट जॉब बट ट्राइंग टू डू समथिंग अपने लिए अपने परिवार के लिए तो सब करते हैं मगर एक आप दरवाजे के बाहर अगर थोड़ा सा भी जो आपको जेनुइन सेटिस्फैक्शन दे आई मीन आज के तारीख में आई एम फीलिंग लाइक दैट आई डोंट नो इफ माय लाइफ वाज डिफरेंट हाउ आई वुड हैव फेल्ट सो आई नो इज नो पॉइंट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट बट टुडे आई फील दैट वी ऑल मस्ट ट्राई टू इम्प्रूव आर सराउंडिंग्स इम्प्रूव आर कंट्री 
by and large that's a huge thing wo bhi ek akela koi nahi kar sakta we all have to join hands to uh, make the world a better place to live and uh, help each other out and dar jana ghabra jana ye to ye isse kaam nahi chalega aapko you have to have a motive in life you have to have a goal in life ki hame kuch to karna hai jaise maine ab i probably no other option but now having taken this as a goal goal i feel we din mein aap ek jane ko bhi help kar do aur iske upar i'll end with a very interesting joke ek a father told his son you must do every every day you must do one good job so and he would ask what did you do today and what did you do today so then the son came back he said uh, what did you do today so he says uh, an elderly lady was trying to uh, <laughs> catch a bus and uh, she, the bus was going away they didn't notice that she's trying to climb mm-hmm. board the bus so i let loose our dog and <laughs> he chased and she caught, she the, caught bus. the bus so that was a so what <laughs> that's was that's uh, another thing but uh, we have to have some aim in life and uh, leave the rest to the god leave the rest to god yes and you mentioned to me when we were discussing pre show that at least you will have one satisfaction in your life that you yes. did what Everything. was humanly possible what was humanly possible what was humanly there possible there was nothing that if it came my way if i heard about it that i did not try and that gives you a sense of some sense of satisfaction that i har did har taraf ki pooja har tarah ki pahadon ke chakkar laga lo ye kar lo everything wo kehte hain if god has willed it that way so be it and you also said this very nice line which you said is a documentary about your story hope dies last in war hope dies last in a war yes and i would urge all our viewers to watch this documentary it's an award winning documentary yes yes uh by an award winning director supriyo sen and yeah. uh, uh it talks about not just your story but stories of all of us many yes. who have fought for this country yes. but who have not after not. their fighting yes. been forgotten ma'am there are many people who come to this show and some incredible people who come to this show but i have to tell you this that your story i haven't heard a more powerful poignant and a heroic story ever before thank know. you thank Thanks you so very much. much for coming god bless thank god you. bless thank you thank god you bless much. all of you thank you